Hello, Fiber friends. Welcome to this video. This is going to be a little bit of a walk through my progress to create a project. And of course, because I make yarn, we're going to start with the fiber. So I'm going to spin this fiber. I am going to weave with my giant floor loom to make some fabric. And then I am going to cut and sew together a purse. First things first, we have to spin the fiber, right? And to do that, because of the way these colors are striped, I am doing something called spinning from the fold. So I find the end of the fiber and I pull off just like that. I just pull from the end. These are the sparkles. Lay a couple sparkles on there as I spin and that's plenty. They'll gather up into the yarn as I go. And then when I take this little staple of fibers, I fold it over my finger and now we head to the spinning wheel to spin it. As it adds twist to the fibers, I am pulling them off of my finger, how they are just, just like that, folded over my finger. And that is how I'm creating this yarn. I don't plan to ply this yarn. I'm going to leave it as a singles yarn and this will be the weft that I will be weaving my fabric from. My yarn is all spun up and taken off the bobbin. I have washed it and set it. It does have some curly cues in it, you'll notice. As I wind it onto the bobbin for weaving, those curly cues are going to get pulled straight. So it does have a lot of energy, but I need that to have a sturdy fabric. I am ready because I'm wearing my shirt. It says Clever Girl, and this is a Velociraptor. I will be channeling my inner Velociraptor because I need cleverness for this project. The thing is I've never woven fabric to put with a pattern. All of the pattern work I've done has been with commercial fabrics and all of the weaving that I've done has mostly been things that were in their final form coming off the loom aside from some hev hemming on the edges. Uh, so this is going to be interesting and this is why we need a little cleverness today. I think the thing I'm the most apprehensive about is the point when I'm actually going to take scissors to my woven fabric. That is terrifying to me. I have never done steaking for the same reason and I know that it, it has a wonderful outcome. It's just the idea of cutting the thing that I painstakingly handmade. It, it's just a little terrifying. So I think once we get through that part, maybe everything else is gonna be gravy on either end of it, but we will get there. So I went through the catalogs and I found this pattern from Berta Young. It is supposed to be an easy pattern. So let's get this pattern out and take a look and see what we need to, what problems we need to solve. I'm going to go for bag letter B. The reason is because it has this secondary fabric here that gives the bag its width so that it's not just like a flat envelope, but it actually has some space in there. They all kind of have that, but this one has that in a different color. And I like that because I'm going to use a different fabric than my own for this portion of the bag. The reason is because this makes the bottom of the bag and I don't want my beautiful hand spun, hand made fabric uh, being all over stuff. <laughs> it, it'll, it'll sit on stuff. Uh, so I think having a different kind of fabric here is going to help protect it. So I do need to find a secondary fabric. It says if the bolt is 45 inches, then I'm going to need one and a quarter yards of my main fabric. And if the bolt is 55 inches, I'm going to need seven eighths, which tells me that it's going to line up differently depending on the width of the fabric. 
this is where it's showing me how the pattern is laid out on the fabric and it's as I suspected. <laughs> Look at this huge space right here is just unused fabric. It's just going to be cut and that is scrap. Oh my goodness. That's on the 45 inch width. And then the 55 inch width has it next to each other. So it, it doesn't, when it's folded over, it doesn't have to be as long. So I guess I'm running into another question here, which is what exactly is my fabric going to look like? And do I have enough fiber yarn at this point to make the fabric that I want? And is it directional? Of course it's directional, but Sometimes you can get away with things, depending. I think I'm going to have to decide my fabric and then come back to this. What weave am I going to do? And then I'll come back to the pattern. One eternity later. I'm back. I'm, I'm so excited because I think I figured this out. This is the fabric I want to make, except it'll be the opposite. So where you see these dark gray circles, that is going to be this fiber. And then where you see all of the white, which is the warp and then a little bit of the weft, that is going to be black. And I think it's gonna be stunning. The first thing I'm thinking is with the pattern because on the pattern, it has the cloth folded over and then you cut the pattern and you end up cutting it twice. So what's on the outside is also what's on the inside. It does not have a lining, it's just doubling up the fabric. So that is very simple. It's an it's a easier kind of thing to do, a little trick to do for a pattern, but for me, that doesn't really make sense because why would I want my beautiful hand spun to be on the inside of a bag, especially where it's gonna get bumped around with keys and stuff like that. So I am going to do an actual lining for this bag on the inside. That means I just cut my fabric requirements in half because I'm not doubling when I cut the pattern pieces. So this is where I'm at right now. I have a couple of problems that I need to figure out. For one, I measured the width of how wide the pattern pieces need to be and it looks like they want it to be cut at about a 13 and then you get a half inch seam allowance on each side which brings the finished piece to a 12 inch width. But the, the basic essence of a honeycomb is that when it's on the loom, it's going to look fairly flat. But when you take it off of the loom, things are going to shift and pull the fabric in different ways so that it starts to create curves and and puff up a little bit here and there and create that honeycomb look like it's an actual honeycomb made by bees and not weavers and spinners. This fabric is going to shift when it comes off the loom. The question is how much? I really actually don't know until I sample it, take it off, finish it and all of that, but with only 720 yards for weft, I don't really have that luxury. And that's terrible. Planning a project like this, you should always plan enough to sample, but we're gonna live dangerously. We are velociraptors, we go with our gut. So I'm going to build in a little extra width. And if I take this off of the loom and everything skews and shrinks and I end up with a six inch wide purse, then we'll just call it a clutch. The weft for this project is calling for 1,450 yards per pound. And the weft that I spun was eight ounces and I got 720 yards from eight ounces. So if we double that eight ounces to make it a pound, I ended up with 1,440. That's pretty right on. I feel like singing the confidence song that Julie Andrews sings in The Sound of Music when she's on her way to meet the children. And she sings, I have confidence in sunshine. I have confidence that I can cut this fabric and make a pattern. I mean, she made, she made outfits for all those children out of curtains, but she's also a goddess. So I don't know if that makes me feel better or worse. Oh dear, oh dear. 
I'm using Aunt Lydia's crochet cotton size 10 and I've made a few adjustments. This should work, I think, but we're gonna see. I have about 40 warp ends on here so far. I'm gonna get up to 50 and then I'll take off the chain and start another one and keep doing that till I get to 215. This is all my warp. It looks like a mess, but it's actually organized and ready to go onto the loom. So that's why I'm here. I'm going to do what is called slaying the reed. And I'll do that with my little hook, my little ver velociraptor claw. Um, but I'll give you some close-ups so you can see what it looks like. This whole process is gonna take a minute. It's gonna take a minute. And when that's done, I will uh, put the threads through the heddles and so I'll show you that when I come to it. This draft requires a 15 dent reed but I have a 10 dent reed and so I'm doing two in one slot, one in the next slot, two in the next slot, one in the next slot. My warp is all set up in the reed and it, it looks good. There it is. I tied knots on the other side of it so that it won't slip out <laughs> because this was a lot of work and I don't want to bump something, you know, have these fall on the floor because they're kind of heavy and then have everything just floop come out. So that's a little safety precaution there while I'm working on things. The next step is going to be to put one thread through one eye, either on shafts one, two, three, or four. And that will be following a pattern so that when it's time to weave, everything lines up just like it should. So I just finished the first five threads and now I'm on the next five. These threads are going to go on shafts two, then one, then two, then one, then two again. So I'm bringing over these five petals on the shafts that I need. And since I've only brought these over, if I end up with a weird thread left over, I will know that I got something wrong. It's much easier to fix this section of a mistake than to realize I made a mistake over here and have to undo from to get the next section, I have to find the next thread in the next slot, which would be, it looks like this one right here. Yep, this one right here, and you cannot mix these up. If you get any of them twisted, you have to undo it, go back and fix it, because it'll cause a problem in the fabric. So I grab the next heddle. Reach from the back and thread it through. And then I don't want this thread to get tangled, so I'm gonna make sure it goes all the way through to the back and falls down there. Once I do a section, I go to the back, double check everything, and then I just put a little overhand bow knot on the threads at the back to make sure that if I bump it or it catches on my clothing or something, it's not gonna pull something out. It just keeps everything secure once they're in there and double checked. So I'll continue and keep doing this for each thread all the way across for all 215 threads.
this is my test weave. And here's what all the warp looks like. Isn't that cool? <laughs> going through there. And then here are all of the heddles threaded. And I'm going to press on a treadle so you can see what happens when I press the treadle. That lifts number two. And you can see over here, it's lifted certain threads, but not the other threads. Now let's look at the weave with the black threads in there, the ones that match the warp thread. This is how the weave is supposed to look. It's supposed to have a contrast between the diameter of the things going through there. And it's looking pretty neat. And the best part is that when it's no longer under tension, everything's going to shift around and these are going to bubble up. It's, it's going to look so cool. So I think I'm going to advance this warp a little bit, which means bring it towards me, make some more space to weave and start weaving with the actual Creepy Corydale and see how it looks the way that this whole thing is supposed to look. I put the Creepy Corydale into two center pull balls instead of, usually I would wind my shuttles straight off of the Yarn Swift. And here's why I have them in center pull balls. The instructions for this pattern say that the thicker portion is supposed to be a yarn of this weight, but you put four strands at a time onto the shuttle. And that is what gives it its sort of fluffy bulkiness. Now it's not a four plied yarn. And I think of this uh, sort of like if you're knitting and you are knitting double stranded instead of getting a thicker yarn that's plied. The double strand sort of has a different look in the fabric and it achieves something different. So I have this yarn in two center pull balls and I'm winding both of them onto the shuttle at the same time from the inside and the outside of both balls at the same time. So can you count all my threads here? I have four uh, winding onto here. So every time I put a shot of this yarn through the loom, it's gonna come out with four strands going across. I have been busy weaving, as you can see. It's winding up underneath there. I have a bag on that just to keep the lumps and bumps from affecting it as it rolls onto that bar down there. 
but this is so much progress and I am loving this fabric. It has a great feel to it. It's sturdy. It's going to be perfect to be the outer, uh, the outer fabric on a bag. I, I love it. It's just coming out even better than I expected it to. And I still have plenty of weft left. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't actually make it wider. I think it could have been, uh, but I did make it plenty long. There is still a lot of warp back there. So I have plenty of room to continue weaving and I will just, I'll just keep on going. So I do have a few more days ahead of me of weaving. And as with all big projects, I think this is gonna have to be a two part video. So I hope that you will join me for the next one when I show you how I take this off the loom, cut it up, make the project. So as always, I will wish you all happy spinning and also happy weaving. I'll see you in the next video.